Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our March the 8th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading out of the original edition, Lesson 67, Love Created Me Like Itself. Love Created Me Like Itself. So you can remind yourself you're a love being. That's what you were created as. That's what your creator is love, and therefore you're love. Love created me like itself. Today's idea is a complete and accurate statement of what you are. This is why you are the light of the world. This is why God appointed you as the world's savior. This is why the Son of God looks to you for his salvation. He is saved by what you are. We will make every effort today to reach this truth about you and to realize fully, if only for a moment, that it is the truth. In the longer practice period, we will think about your reality and its wholly unchanged and unchangeable nature. We will begin by repeating this truth about you, and then spend a few minutes adding some relevant thoughts such as, Holiness created me holy. Kindness created me kind. Helpfulness created me helpful. Perfection created me perfect. Love created me like itself. So we're going to take our 10 to 15 minute period today and we're going to just let related thoughts come to us. Uh, say, to, say, you know, love created me like itself. And, and then think of other concepts. Um, neighborliness, uh, kindness uh, created me neighborly or, or, or kindly. All right, so any attribute which is in accord with God as he defines himself is appropriate for use. We're trying today to undo your definition of God and replace it with his own. We're also trying to emphasize that you are part of his definition of himself. Okay, after you've gone over several such related thoughts, try to let all thoughts drop away for a brief preparatory interval and then try to reach past all your images and preconceptions about yourself to the truth in you. If love created you like itself, this self must be in you, and somewhere in your mind it is there for you to find. Wow, we want to find ourselves, don't we? You may find it necessary to repeat the idea for today from time to time to replace distracting thoughts. Shall I read that again? You may find it necessary to repeat the idea for today from time to time to replace distracting thoughts. So we can use our lesson of the day to try to keep ourselves focused on what we're doing and not let our minds go racing off to other things, okay? You may also find that this is not sufficient and that you need to continue adding other thoughts related to the truth about yourself. Yet perhaps you will succeed in going past that and through the interval of thoughtlessness to the awareness of a blazing light <laughs> in which you recognize yourself as love created you. You want to reach the light, the blazing light, he calls it. Be confident that you will do much today to bring that awareness nearer. Whether you feel you have succeeded or not, <laughs> just for the fact that you're sitting here waiting and looking and, and anticipating and feel like it's an important task to be doing, you're bringing that day on closer, whether you think you were successful or not, of, of entering into the blazing light of um, awareness of love of God. It will be particularly helpful today to practice the idea for today as often as you can. You need to hear the truth about yourself frequently or as frequently as possible because your mind is so preoccupied with false self-images. Wow. So we need to want to tell ourselves a lot today. Love created me like itself. Four or five times an hour and perhaps even more. Wow. Okay. Every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or even more if you can. It would be most beneficial to remind yourself that love created you like itself. Hear the truth about yourself in this. 
try to realize in the shorter practice periods that this is not your tiny solitary voice that tells you this. This is the voice of God reminding you of your Father and of yourself. This is the voice of truth replacing everything that the ego tells you about yourself with the simple truth about the Son of God. You were created by love like itself. Love created me like itself. Okay, let's go look in our text reading in, in chapter 14, Bridging or Bringing Illusions to the Truth, section 5, The Recognition of Holiness. Uh, okay, paragraph 38. I've got a couple, you know, a couple more potatoes that I'm going to plant this year. And these are called uh, red uh, Pontiacs. Red, you know, and these are big enough. If they're bigger than an inch diameter, you can you can cut them in half. And that, I mean, there's good two inches. I could probably get four out of that one, wouldn't you say? And it's got plenty of eyes in it. See all the eyes on it? Just make sure you have at least one or two eyes in each piece you cut. And uh, you've got you at least two, probably three or four seed potatoes right here. And like I said, cut them a day early so that they can scab over or, or, or work sooner. Okay, the red Pontiac potato, also known as Dakota Chief. It's a thin-skinned red potato, uh, white meat. Uh, they make really nice new potatoes. And they're a mid-season variety in that they take... Um, 80 to 100 days, where, you know, our red Nolan yesterday was only a 70-day potato. That'd be an early potato. Uh, these are oftentimes dug up as an, a young potato. You can dig them up as soon as they start forming and eat them. They're just, they're totally fine, ready to eat whenever they're big enough that you want to eat one. Uh, let's see, it's a very popular potato. Uh, performs well in heavy clay soils, it says. That's kind of common for the Ozarks. Uh, developed in 1938. You know, all potatoes, I told you the other day that they were basically developed in South America. It was the, the, the pre-Inca civilization of Peru that really developed potatoes, and they found records as much as 8,000 years ago that potatoes were being developed. A lot of the potatoes in North America got here by way of Europe, though. And that's what I was telling, trying to tell you, that the the, the invaders into uh, South America ended up taking the potato to Europe and then from Europe and, and Ireland, we all hear about Irish potatoes. Anyway, they all made their way back to North America because there was just such a good staple. Uh, there's, there were 2,500 varieties known by the, by the pre-Columbian pre, uh, Incas. Anyway, some nice things about potatoes. They, there was a Cherokee clan called the Wild Potato Clan that uh, that uh, they think it disappeared. Well, shoot, I think everybody that eats a potato might be part of the Wild Potato Clan, particularly if you grow potatoes the way I like to grow them, which, you know, just plant them anywhere they grow. <laughs> the recognition of holiness. The atonement does not make holy. You were created holy. It merely brings unholiness to holiness or what you made to what you are. The bringing together of truth and illusion of the ego to God is the Holy Spirit's only function. Keep not your making from your Father, for hiding it has cost you knowledge of Him and of yourselves. The knowledge is safe, but wherein is your safety apart from it? The making of time to take the place of timelessness lay in the decision to be not as you were. Thus truth was made past, and the present was dedicated to illusions. And the past, too, was changed and interposed between what always was and now. The past which you remember never was, and represents only the denial of what always was. Isn't that something? The past which you remember never was and represents only the denial of what always was. <laughs> bringing the ego to God is but to bring error to truth, where it stands corrected because it is the opposite of what it meets and is undone, because the contradiction can no longer stand. Let's read that again. 
bringing the ego to God is but to bring error to truth, where it stands corrected because it is the opposite of what it meets and is undone, because the contradiction can no longer stand. So when you let what is in your mind be open to what would it would contradict, well then the, the truth can kind of like rise to the surface. You that have milked cows know that when you milk a cow, the cream rises to the top. Well, it's because they're mixed in together and let them sit for a while, the cream rises to the top and the milk settles, and cream being lighter. Well, the same way when you just allow what is to come into your presence without trying to push it away or being upset with it or avoiding it, in the, in the, in the light of consciousness, the cream rises to the top, you might say. The goodness becomes obvious, and what's not worthy of any consideration, you dismiss because you see it in its context. And that's what the Holy Spirit helps you to do. How long can contradiction stand when its impossible nature is clearly revealed? What disappears in light is not attacked. It merely vanishes because it is not true. Different realities are meaningless, for reality must be one. It cannot change with time or mood or, ch or chance. Its changelessness is what makes it real. This cannot be undone. Undoing is for unreality, and this reality will do for you. <laughs> merely by, uh, paragraph 40, merely by being what it does, merely by being what it is, does truth release you from everything that it is not. Merely by being what it is, does truth release you from everything that it is not. The atonement is so gentle you need but whisper to it, and all its power will rush to your assistance and support. You are not frail with God beside you, yet without him you are nothing. The atonement offers you God. The gift which you refused is held by him in you. The Spirit holds it there for you. God has not left his altar, though his worshiper placed other gods upon it. The temple still is holy, for the presence that dwells within it is holiness. 41. In the temple, holiness waits quietly for the return of them that love it. The presence knows they will return to purity and to grace. The graciousness of God will take them gently in and cover all their sense of pain and loss with the immortal assurance of their Father's love. Boy, this goes along with today's lesson. Love created me like itself. Now listen to this paragraph. <laughs> And we're going to really develop this idea as we continue in this paragraph. Let's, let's start again at the beginning. And think about this paragraph in the context that God created you like himself. Love created you loving. In the, temp, in the temple, holiness waits quietly for the return of them that love it. The presence knows they will return to purity and to grace. The graciousness of God will take them gently in and cover all their sense of pain and loss with the immortal assurance of their Father's love. There, fear of death will be replaced with joy of living. For God is life, and they abide in life. Life is as holy as the holiness by which it was created. The presence of holiness lives in everything that lives, for holiness created life and leaves not what it created, holy as itself. 42. In this world you can become a spotless mirror in which the holiness of your Creator shines forth from you to all around you. Reminds me of that passage Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount there in Matthew. Be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, look what he's saying now, 2,000 years later. In this world, you can become a spotless mirror in which the holiness of your Creator shines forth from you to all around you. 
Now, I'd call that being perfect when you're spotless mirror. You're not giving any distortions. You're just letting the love flow through you. So, in this world, you can become a spotless mirror in which the holiness of your Creator shines forth from you to all around you. You can reflect heaven here. Yet no reflections of the images of other gods must dim the mirror that would hold God's reflection in it. We don't want to have values that value illusions or other gods, as he calls it. That makes our mirror not reflective of the truth in this world. Earth can reflect heaven or hell, God or the ego. You need but leave the mirror clean and clear of all the images of hidden darkness you have drawn upon it. God will shine upon it of himself. Only the clear reflection of himself can be perceived upon it. Reflections are seen in light. In darkness they are obscure, and their meaning seems to lie only in shifting interpretations rather than in themselves. 43. The reflection of God needs no interpretation. It is clear. Clear, but the mirror and the message which shines forth from what the mirror holds out for everyone to see, no one can fail to understand. It is the message that the Holy Spirit is holding to the mirror that is in him. He recognizes it because he has been taught his need for it, but knows not where to look to find it. Let him then see it in you and share it with you. 44. Could you but realize for a single instant the power of healing that the reflection of God shining in you can bring to all the world? You could not wait to make the mirror of your mind clean to receive the image of the holiness that heals the world. That's a long sentence, but boy, there's so much there. Really, let's get it down. Let's read it again. Could you but realize for a single instant the power of healing that the reflection of God shining in you can bring to all the world? You could not wait to make the mirror of your mind clean to receive the image of the holiness that heals the world. The image of holiness which shines in your mind is not obscure and will not change. Its meaning to those who look upon it is not obscure, for everyone perceives it as the same. All bring their different problems to its healing light, but all their problems are met only with healing there. In the last paragraph, 45, the response of holiness to any form of error is always the same. There is no contradiction in what holiness calls forth, its one response is healing, without regard for what is brought to it. Doesn't matter how sick the problem is, <laughs> there's no order of difficulty in miracles. So, its one response is healing, without regard to what is brought to it. Those who have learned to offer only healing because of the reflection of holiness in them are ready at last for heaven. <laughs> There, holiness is not a reflection, but rather the actual condition of what was but reflected to them here. God is no image, and his creations, as part of him, hold him in them in truth. They do not merely reflect truth, for they are truth. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, listen, for today, let's, let's be sure to... Uh, remember that uh, love created me like itself. He says here that uh, try to realize in the shorter practice periods that you're going to do throughout the day that this is not your tiny solitary voice that tells you this, that love created me like itself. This is the voice of God or the voice for God reminding you of your father and of yourself. This is the voice of truth, replacing everything that the ego tells you about yourself with the simple truth about the Son of God. You were created by love like itself. Love created me like itself. 
Thank you all so much for joining me. Say it often to yourself today. Love created me like itself.